Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at an example of optimization. A swimmer is two miles out in the ocean and wishes to arrive at a town three miles down the coast. The swimmer needs to swim to shore and then jog along the beach to get to the town. She can swim at two miles per hour and jog at six miles per hour. To what point along the shore should she swim so that the time it takes to get to the town is a minimum? All right, so we've got kind of a little diagram going here. Let's put some labels on it. So first thing we know is our swimmer is two miles out into the ocean. So here's our little swimmer. She wishes to get to the town, which is over here, that is three miles along the shore. So this distance is three miles. The swimmer needs to swim to shore, so this diagonal path here would be where she would swim to some point and then jog the rest. So let's call that distance from where, kind of perpendicular to where she is at the shore now to that point where she would arrive, let's call that distance x since it's unknown. Then the distance that she would need to jog would be the total of three miles minus however far over she landed, or three minus x. Also, we have a right triangle here, so if we needed an expression for the distance she would swim, we could use two squared plus x squared equals this value, and if we solve for that, we get the square root of x squared plus two squared, or four. So this distance here that she would need to swim would be the square root of x squared plus four. Okay, now that we've got our diagram all labeled up, let's see if we can get an equation or a mathematical model for what's gonna happen. So let's think about what is it that we are trying to minimize? Well, we're trying to minimize the time that it would take her. So we have a bunch of information here about distance, and we are told the rate that she can swim and the rate that she can jog. So we have a basic relationship between distance, rates, and times, and that is that distance is equal to rate times time. We would like that equation in terms of time, so dividing both sides by r, we get that time is equal to distance over rate. So our swimmer here is going to have to swim part of her trip, and then she's going to have to jog the other part of her trip. So we're gonna think in terms of swim and then in terms of jog. So for swimming, the distance that she would be swimming would be the square root of x squared plus four. The rate that she can swim, we are given as two miles per hour. So there will be some time where she's swimming, then we're gonna to add to that the time where she is jogging. Well, the distance that she would need to jog would be three minus x, and we're told that she can jog at a rate of six miles per hour. So here we have a function of time in terms of this distance x that she needs to land along the shore. So if we want to minimize that, we need to first figure out what's a reasonable interval that we're working with, and second, are there any critical points on that interval? So here our variable is x, so thinking about an interval for x, well, what's the smallest x can be? Well, technically, she could swim straight up and jog the rest, the whole three miles, in which case this distance over would be zero. So that's an option. She could land zero miles over and just swim straight up. The furthest over that she could land would be if she swam all the way to town and she didn't jog at all. In that case, x would be three. 
the full three miles over. So our reasonable inter interval for x is zero to three. So next we wanna figure out what are the critical point or points in that interval. So we'll do that by finding t prime. But before we do that, let's see if we can rewrite this function in a way that makes it a bit easier to take the derivative. So I'm gonna think of this as 1 half x squared plus four to the 1 half power plus here, just putting each term in the numerator over the denominator separately, three over six is the same as one half minus x over six. I could think of that as one sixth x. So now that's a bit easier to take the derivative of. So my derivative t prime would be using my chain rule here, one half times one half is one fourth times x squared plus four to the negative one half power times the derivative of x squared plus four or two x. Plus my derivative for one half is zero minus derivative of one sixth x is one sixth. So cleaning that up just a bit, one fourth times two x makes x over four, so we have x over, sorry, x over two, and then we can take this x squared plus four to the negative one half and put that as a square root in our denominator. Then we still have our minus one over six. All right, now that we've got our derivative, we want to set it equal to zero to find any critical points. Setting this equal to zero, I'm gonna go ahead and move that one sixth over. So x over two times the square root of x squared plus four now equals one sixth. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cross multiply. So two square root of x squared plus four times one just gives me two square root x squared plus four, and then x times six gives me six x. I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by two. That gives me square root of x squared plus four equals three x. Squaring both sides here to get rid of that square root, I get x squared plus four equals nine x squared. Subtracting over my x squared, I get four equals eight x squared. If I divide over that eight, that is one half, gives me x squared. And then taking the square root of that, that's the square root of one over the square root of two, really thinking plus or minus there equals x. Now our interval is zero to three, so we're not gonna use the negative version here. And we know that the square root of one is one. And we also might want to go ahead and rationalize that. So if I multiply that by root two over root two, I get a critical point of square root of two over two. All right, so square root of two over two obviously isn't something that is going to be super easily plugged back into time. So sometimes with these optimization problems, we're going to utilize um, our calculator to evaluate at our endpoints and at our critical point. So I've gone ahead and done that for us here. So I've taken in just a TI-84 calculator, I've plugged our time equation into our y equals, and then I've gone into the table function and I've evaluated that time function at each one of our endpoints and our critical point. So we've got that zero is three over two or 1.5. Root two over two is approximately 0 0.707, and we see that gives a time interval of 1.44. 
and then 3 we get 1.802. So remembering here that, again, 3 over 2 is about 1.5, we have our minimum occurring at our critical point. So we can say she should land or she should swim to a point square root of 2 over 2 miles along the shore since Again, just scrolling up a little bit so we can see our diagram. Remember that x was our distance along the shore that she would land. So she should swim to a point, root 2 over 2 miles along the shore, to minimize her time traveled. Alright guys, that does it for this video on optimization. We'll see you in a future one.